Hey guys, it's Libby. So, uh, over the summer, I didn't really properly evaluate how busy I would be, and I didn't read as many books or make as many videos as I thought that I would. Um, but in September and October, I got back on the horse, I was reading more, I was filming more, and I thought, like, maybe I'd be able to catch up and finish my Goodreads challenge of 100 books, uh, maybe I could get back to putting something out every week, um, and now I live in a fascist country, so that kind of took its toll. November was not a good month for me, as I suspect it wasn't for you. Um, and then for um, 10 days after the election, from, from kind of the day of to the day I left for Y'all Fest, um, I was like in a different world. Time somehow managed to pass, but I don't remember what I was doing. It certainly wasn't anything productive. Uh, and then I went to Y'all Fest, and I tried to be a good vlogger and get some footage, but I was just so miserable looking that <laughs> it was not working. Um, so I did put up a couple of pre-filmed videos, but this, I, I don't think I filmed anything in the month of November. Um, so let's wrap up my reading in the month of November. I listened to one audiobook and I read one book. Oh, I should probably mention this. Um, I'm doing okay now. I'm not horribly depressed anymore. Um, largely because uh, David and I are going to move to Canada. Everyone says it. All the liberals say if the Republican wins, I'm going to move to Canada. Uh, we're actually doing it. Um, so it takes like six to nine months, so sometime in 2017 we will be moving to the Greater Toronto Area. So, um, the, the one book that I actually read was Wintersmith by Terry Pratchett. This is the third book in the Tiffany Aching series. Um, this is also the first book in the Tiffany Aching series that I hadn't read before. I had already read We Free Men and A Hatful of Sky. Um, I'd basically forgotten everything that happened in A Hatful of Sky, and I didn't really like it. I didn't really like Winter Smith either. So in this book, Tiffany is continuing her apprenticeship as a witch, and um, she goes with uh, Granny Weatherwax, who's sort of the... She's not the head witch. She's definitely not the witch in charge. Witches don't have leaders. But if they did, it would be her. Um, they, they go to sort of see the Morris dance, because this is so very English. Um, the Morris dance that is danced to like summon in the winter, and Tiffany sort of gets carried away and joins in the dance, which is a bad idea because now the winter smith, who is like the god of winter, thinks that she is the summer lady, who is the goddess of summer, um, and he is in love with her. Um, she is like 13, so I felt weird about that. But really what's bothering me with these later Tiffany Aching books is the setting. And that's why I like The We Free Men, because it's set um, on the chalk, and it, it's, its, own, it's a new setting that we haven't seen before, and Terry Pratchett does a really good job of exploring it. And the chalk is sort of like Devon area, um, which is also Thomas Hardy country, and I'm a big Thomas Hardy fan, so it sort of felt like I was just reading more Hardy with like sheep and people with interesting dialects. Um, but these are taking place in what I can only call the mountains, or it's the setting that was used for the witches' novels. But it's, it's really different. I kind of feel like someone else wrote this series because I guess kind of all of the pieces are there for it to be the same setting, but it's not. Um, I don't think the words, the Ram Tops, which is the name for the mountain chain, uh, is used in this book. I don't think that the word Long Cray appears anywhere in this book, which is the kingdom where the, the witches' novels are set. Um, and the whole environment feels completely different. There's a lot more witches, for one, and they seem to live a lot closer together. Um, so in the witches' novels, there's pretty much just Granny Weatherwax, Nanny Og, and then either Magrat or Agnes. Um, 
in the king as the witches of the kingdom of Lancre. And then there's like occasional references to other witches, but we don't see them that much and they presumably live a long way away and you know. But in this one, they're all kind of right on top of each other. They visit each other a lot. They have like get togethers where like at least dozens, possibly hundreds of witches show up. Like were there that many witches? That wasn't the impression that I got. There seems to be a more structured apprenticeship system. Um, witches kind of have their own patch, like their town that they deal with. And none of this was what it seemed like it was doing. Um, so I'm not really getting, and I feel, I feel like I have a slight vertigo um, in this setting. And I also don't like it as much um, because the reason that there are more witches is basically so that there can be more interpersonal drama. And oh my God, as in books, as in real life, I hate interpersonal drama. It's not interesting to read about. Like, we are all adults here. I mean, some of them are teenage girls, but like, close enough, we're all adults here. Can we just not be petty? And the interpersonal drama that's going on, like, amongst the younger apprentice witches um, is very reminiscent of what was going on in, um, it was either Lords and Ladies or Weird Sisters, where um, there, there's, there's sort of the, the, the new young witches who like want to be cool and wear black and like meet by moonlight and wear occult jewelry and I know that. And like actually cast spells, which is not what Granny Weatherwax and Nanny Og do. And Granny Weatherwax is very disapproving and kind of indirectly tries to shame these younger witches. Um, we basically have the same thing going on in these later Tiffany Aching novels. And um, I didn't super love it in the Witches series, and I like it even less here. I hope, I hope that the last two are better. Can we return to the chalk for I Shall Wear Midnight? Because that is where Tiffany belongs, and that is where I want to be. I think I gave this book either a 3 or 2.5. And then the audiobook that I finished was The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I'm currently listening to the second book, The Dream Thieves. I'm about halfway through that. Um, and what's been really interesting for me listening to these books is that Elizabeth from Books and Pieces is also listening to them. And, or I, th I think she's finished the first, the second one and she is now stopping. Um, but she lives in Wales and this story is about it's set in Virginia, and there's a bunch of kids who are trying to discover the burial site of this Welsh king who was supposedly brought across the Atlantic and buried um, on a ley line that co connects Wales and the Appalachian Mountains. And the part that Elizabeth doesn't like is the um, weird appropriation of Welsh mythology and like that's not how the actual Owain Glendower, how he would have worked. And uh, for me, I'm a Virginian, so hello from the other side of the ley line, Elizabeth. Um, and I really, the, the, I mean, I don't know that much about the Welsh mythology, so um, I, don't, I don't know enough to be bothered by it, basically. But I really enjoy experiencing this setting that I am familiar with. I live in the foothills and the Raven Cycle is set in the mountains, but it's only about an hour's drive to get to the mountains for me. Um, and I do go sort of wander around Shenandoah National Park sometimes. So update, I did go to the mountains. I haven't found any dead Welsh kings yet. But like I was driving in Great Falls, which is the, the stupid rich area, um, while I was like listening to Gansey's um, trip back to his parents' house for his mother's birthday, and I was like, yup, this is the kind of house that Gansey lives in. And when Maggie Stiefvater talks about, like, the feeling of summer nights in Virginia, I know exactly what she's talking about. She's also from Virginia. So at this point, at least, this is a series that I'm planning on finishing. I gave the Raven Boys, um, the first book, 3.5, 4 stars. Um, I will do a full review of the series once I'm done with it. And then currently reading, um, I'm working on the Dream Thieves audiobook, and I am, I've picked up Siege and Storm again. Um, I, I wanted to make some progress in it because Lee Bardugo was going to be at Y'all Fest. Um, I ended up not standing in the Lee Bardugo line because it is insanely long, and I don't 
own any books that I haven't had her sign. I haven't bought the Six of Crows and the Crooked Kingdom yet. I did put this down for a couple of days and then when I picked it back up yesterday, I was reading a bit of it and I was just like, I hate this. I'm on page 202. Um, so if you've read this, you know that like we, we've just gotten into the interpersonal drama and I don't care. I kind of, I feel weird saying this, but I want to get back to like the saving the world stuff. Um, normally, I don't, normally I like really small stories like Rebecca's like tiny story. It's 400 pages of like, oh, what, I don't think my husband loves me. Um, I normally don't gravitate towards books that are about saving the world. But in this case, I miss it. So I am going to um, continue on with this because I, I sense a light at the end of the tunnel, the tunnel of interpersonal drama. And I have no idea what I'm going to read after that. That might actually last me until um, the Cramathon. I'll have to decide what I want to read for that. So thank you guys very much for watching despite all of the depressing personal stuff at the beginning. <laughs> I will see you with another video hopefully soon.